Morning, everybody. All right, looks like we have most people in. So we're going to start with our attendance question. Today's attendance question is not as silly as usual. It's a little bit more serious. So hopefully you had a minute to actually think about it. But um, it's, would you rather lose your past memories or not be able to store new memories? All right. So a little bit more pensive. Ashwin. Lose my current memory. Sophia. This past. Stacy. Lose my past memories. Bella. Lose my past memories. Melanie. Lose my past memories. Kevin. Past memories. Teresa. Not be able to store new memories. Lacey. Lose past memories. Abel. Lose past memories. Raquel. Past memories. Susanna. Past memories. Selena. Past memories. Jade. Past memories. Rico. Past memories. Myrna. Not be able to store new memories. Matthew. Uh, past memories. Gia. Gia, I see you, but I think you're frozen. So if you want to type it in the chat instead. Amana. Past memories. Catherine. Um, I'd lose my past. Sky. Past memories. Nethia. Lose my past memories. Nicole. Not be able to store new one. Rhea. Past memories. Colleen. Past memories. Elsie. Past memories. Evan. Past memories. Jeffrey. I'm not seeing Jeffrey. All right, Angel. Not be able to store new memories. Vicky. Um, past memories. Emily. Past memories. Belinda. Past memories. Michelle. Past memories. Tiffany. Past memories. Shyla. Past memories. All right, thank you guys. All right, so uh, announcements and then agenda overview. I'm gonna do announcements first. So um, as you guys know, your portfolios are due today, tonight, technically 11.59, so I'll start checking yours tomorrow. This way, if you wanted to record your conversation today, you need one last bit of things, or you wanted to talk to me about something one last time, I would just, you know, today give you that last, that final opportunity to do so. Um, the feedback survey, it's totally optional. If you had the opportunity to complete it, awesome. If not, you know, if, if you could get to that when you have a chance, but like I said, completely optional. There's something I'm gonna work on for the teachers coming for the uh, next month on like just different strategies for feedback. And if you haven't already, just making appointments for conferences, especially because the schedule is gonna be shifting now that like school's gonna go back. So at least we know like for the next week that also I'll be able to have that one hour conference time with you guys. So if your team wants to make an appointment to talk about your projects, now's a really good time to set up those appointments. Um, those are the main announcements, nothing else as far as agenda overview. Same as usual, we're gonna have a mood meter check-in, feedback, then breakout rooms, two tasks. You have your passage master, same thing, like picking the question or creating the question aligns with the, the lessons from today. So we have the double lessons today, chapters two and three. From, well, it's one lesson, but it's two chapters from, from Grendel. There's a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, and then also I want you guys to spend some time 
with either, you know, talking about your portfolios or projects, whatever your team needs. So just like more individual basis there. I'm not going to shift into room seven this time. This because I need a little bit more time in each breakout room with you guys, just talking about the different stuff from Grendel and answering people's questions about their projects and portfolios as they're moving forward. So I'm not going to do the room seven. If you guys need me at that moment, use that call me feature at the bottom of the, your Zoom screen. Uh, then we're going to you know, bring it all together, whole group discussion, just like uh, as usual, your passage master will put it in the chat. And then we'll talk about next cycle. Otherwise, let's pick your word and then we'll waterfall in the mood meter. So pick your word. Bella, you have a question? Uh, yeah, so um, for today, or the portfolio check-in that's due today, um, do we, for each of the standards, if we showed mastery in a previous check-in, do we have to, like, basically show mastery again? No. Like, go to certain lengths? Mm -mm. No. Nope, nope. You, you focus on standard five then, and then um, if you took a look at that sheet that I made about, like, how to achieve mastery for reflections three and four, you know, you want to be addressing some of those questions. And I, I got your chat message. I'll, as soon as we have our uh, breakout rooms, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you. All right, everybody find your word. So it's three, two, one, waterfall it. All right, would anybody like to share? Kev, thank you. Yeah, so I'm feeling kind of calm right now. Um, I have a couple things to finish up with the portfolio, but that's pretty much all I have for the rest of the week. So um, just, yeah, kind of calm. Uh, this week, don't have a lot like to or anything in school. That's good. Good. A lot better than what I know everybody was like expressing last week. So I'm glad to hear that. There's a couple people, so I don't know if Kevin, you want to pass it? Oh, oh okay. Uh, Kat? Um, I, this might be, okay, so I put restless, but it's sort of for a different reason than it's been like through all of high school because I didn't think this would catch on to me, but the second semester senior kind of mentality, it's kind of getting to me. And like, I've never been one to really put things off to the very last minute, but I'm kind of like slowly seeing myself doing that <laughs> and it is causing some anxiety, but I'm just trying to get back on track. Like this portfolio, I'm going to have to finish it by tonight, but um. Like, it's not like unmanageable, but it's kind of getting, it's kind of causing some anxieties. Okay, well, I mean, the, the fact that you're aware of it, that's good because when we're aware of something, that's when we can like make shifts towards it. So looking forward, you might, you guys might, if you're feeling the senioritis, you might want to plan backwards. So find out whatever like your final deadlines are for things and then determine like how you best work. Some people are last minute workers. You know, some people need to do a little bit every day to kind of like trudge through it. So you got to know yourself and then determine this way you can get whatever you need to get done done. But awareness is the first step. So that's good, Catherine. <laughs> um, Bella? Uh, yeah, so like a lot of uh, like what Kat and Kevin said, um, I feel like for me, I'm coming to like this kind of like this Around, like this type of ending, I guess you could say, of like uh, most of these um, heavy, stressful assignments or tasks or like personal things that I need to take care of. 
like around today, maybe tomorrow will be around the end of these things. So I put tired because I feel a little bit like drained from just the long haul of it. But mm. like I see the light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm just, you know, just pulling through for now. You got this. You do. Oh, Sky. Yeah, um, I also put tired for like a similar reason. There's just like a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, and like Bella said, it's a lot of like those those big assignments kind of like, for some reason, we were talking about this last week, March is like a month where everyone assigns like bigger assignments <laughs> or at least a little more work. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, I'm, I'm like, I'm like happy with myself because normally I, I am a last minute worker, not like the day before, but usually like two days before I need that little bit of like, I need to sit down and do it in one shot. Okay. Um, but I haven't had, I haven't had the tra- the chance to do that this week. So I've kind of had to like split everything up and it's working so far. Um, like Bo said, I see that there's like a, an end. I don't know if it's good or bad, but there's an end. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you just got to make it there. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You just got to make it there knowing yourself. If you need to chunk things out, if you need little bits at a time, if you or somebody got to just slam it all down and like just sit there for eight hours. It just really comes down to knowing yourself and how you are most effective and asking yourself those questions first. So thank you guys for sharing. Um, any feedback with class? And this is where I'll address that question that Bella had about um, the reflection. So if you did get mastery from your last portfolio, you do. I don't need to hear about the other standards again because you've already addressed those and you got the mastery there. That that lives in your checkpoints one and two. I don't need to see that again. And then what I want you to do is to focus on um, standard five, illustrating standard five, the points there, and then especially the reflection, making your ref- reflection more powerful. So I have that link in the portfolio paper, but let me put it in the chat again. This way it could just kind of reiterate for everybody how to make your reflection more powerful. I wrote it like, I don't know, whenever the last checkpoint was for the portfolio, I wrote this that next day. So it's like, this is what, and for a lot of you, I wrote like to get mastery in checkpoints three and four, I'm going to need to see this. There was, that was a, a common comment that I had for, a lot of you. So this is what you want to look at if you didn't if you didn't look at it yet. Just an, yet another reminder. Sky. Um, this is a bit more of a question, but let's say you didn't like achieve mastery, not because of something that in your reflection. Like I know, for example, um, I had you you put a comment on mine about like being more specific instead of saying like just standard three. I would have to say like three I or whatever. Yeah. Um, should we should it, I re I know I have to readdress that in my reflection now be like but can I use the same materials can I just say like oh I went back and fixed my reflection yeah so what you want to do then is um you have two options you could address it in the new reflection or you could revise your other reflection just tell me in the new reflection oh uh, I learned that I need to be a little bit more specific so I revised my reflection checkpoint too this way I know that I need to go back and reread your two just something so like you're basically giving me instructions. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Okay, very good. Anybody else feedback slash questions? Just jump in because I think because I'm recording, my Zoom is super laggy. So I'm not even seeing like the hands pop up. So just jump in if you have something. All right. Otherwise, you know, as always, pull me in or put in the chat, you know, the drill. Uh, I'm going to send everybody to their breakout rooms, um, like same as before. It's in the agenda in case you missed what I was saying earlier. Just the two jobs, the passage master, your screen share, and then whatever amount of time you guys want to spend either talking about your portfolios and or projects. 
right, give me two seconds to open these up. Okay, rooms are open. Um, Ms. Lazara, I think you made, you forgot to make a room seven. Yeah, no, I said that I'm not going to do room seven today because I'm going to spend more time in each breakout room and just call me in if you you have a mo in the moment question. Okay, sorry. That's okay. Shyla, do you need help getting to your room? Okay, I think she's double logged in. Yeah, there were two kids, I think, that are double logged in because of sound. So now yeah. they're in their breakout room, mm -hmm. but uh, they're going over like what they're handing in tonight for portfolio. No, so they are going in. I'll put it in the, the chat for you. Give me a second. Um, they are going to go over. They're doing the Grendel chapters. Yeah, so they have the syllabus. Um, do you want the link to the syllabus or the specific lesson for today? That doesn't matter. Whichever is easier for you to grab. All right, it's all the same. So, um, so I'll give you the specific lesson for today and I'll share my screen with you so you can see what they see. So they get, all right, on the, in their, um, the night before in their Google Classroom, I send them this. Like, so I have it scheduled to post 6 p.m. the night before. And it's basically, I follow the same format of the agenda. The only thing I adjust really are the amount of times for the different things. And it's like, what are you looking at? You're going to look okay. at lesson 52. This is what today is going to look like. And it's basically just what I go over, and but it's written out for them too, you know, because everybody's different. Some of them, right. yeah, but this way they can refer so they know their specific job when they're in the breakout room, what some of the announcements are, blah, blah, blah. They have the syllabus, so it tells them like on the left-hand side what the lesson number is. So they have access to all of my lessons for the whole year. Okay. And they know exactly, okay, this cycle, and I'm a cycle behind. So this is cycle 34, which means that they, tonight, will start reading chapter four. We're going over lessons 52. So I'm always a cycle behind as far as a lesson. Okay. And this, and like, it, it took like a little bit of time to get acclimated to that. But by like mid, like, I'd say like end of September, it was like, oh, okay, that's how this works. And it was me trying to figure it out too, how to make the cycle thing work. So now they all have this lesson. And what I'll do now, you and usually like as a like you heard Nathia say, like I usually have a room seven open that I'll have like 10 minutes just for like private conferences. But because this lesson is pretty complicated, I'm gonna just spend more time in the breakout rooms and their portfolios are due today anyway. So there's not much left like for them to conference. But as like it gets closer to portfolios, I'll have like set, I have the hour every day anyway that they make appointments. But otherwise in the breakout room, like I'll have a room seven, like where I'll just stay for about 10 minutes and they can come in and out really quickly. But if you want to go hopping around the breakout rooms, they, they know there's somebody who's supposed to be screen sharing if they can. And then somebody who's a passage master who's in charge of choosing the group question. And they should be discussing okay. the lesson of it. So I say just go pop in a in a room and you'll see. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. A really chatty group, if you're looking for that is room six. That crew is always like rooms three and six are my chattiest. But go anywhere. All right. <laughs> no problem. Mm -hmm. Um, I just kind of, you know, like, isn't it more like um hey. that he isn't like a part of the poll? Hello. Just letting you guys know I'm here. This is so my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna like interrupt you because this is my absolute favorite 
line. Like I have it as my Facebook background. I have it as like my Twitter background. Where it's just Grundle like this, like doing like ridiculous hairy creature torn apart by poetry. And I relate to that on such a visceral level, especially if I don't feel like shaving, right? You know, like, so <laughs> I'm just being silly with you guys. But but the idea of like just this push and pull, this dichotomy between the two. So what were you guys talking about? We were, oh, we were, just talking, yeah. we were just talking about how to answer this question. And what we basically said was kind of like, he's really edgy, like an edgy teen who's annoyed by poetry, but also kind of like, isn't, cause like poetry often tells story, this tells the story of like heroes and he's always the villain in a sense. So wouldn't he be like, kind of torn apart in this way where he wants to be involved and wants to be kind of like a hero, but he can never be seen as a hero. Bam, exactly, Vicky. And this is where the question about like the shaper comes into play, because once we understand the real role of the shaper, Grendel's feeling makes more sense. So to backtrack to really answer this question, you have to talk about the shaper first. That's kind of like a trick that I don't tell you until I tell you. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. Hi. So I'm so I gotta like just interrupt wherever you are because this chunk is like the chunk with the, Grendel's line, like ridiculous hairy creature torn apart by poetry. I relate to that on such a deep level. <laughs> like that, I love that line. Um, so, and yeah, okay. Anyway, where were you guys? Sorry. <laughs> well, we were just reading through this so we could discuss the question about the HTR LAP. Okay. So like, commentary and like, all right, I'll, I'll leave you guys, as you're talking about this, I'll leave you with a little bit of a clue. Um, I gave you the clue from, you know, how to read literature like a professor, but also think about things that we've read before and the blind characters we've encountered before. Because as I've taught you guys, nothing's original, memory symbol pattern. So you've met a blind character before and they've had specific features before. That will help you as far as defining the shaper. And then I'm going to, I'll make another round because hopefully that'll deepen your inquiry. Um, the, the, when he was doing the songs and the poetry and things, um, cause like I know, um, when we watched the movie of Beowulf, that was like a big part of it of why he decided to go attack the humans was because he, he was in physical pain by like their merriment and stuff. And so I think that's um, kind of what that kind of uh, represents. So I'm just jumping in guys and I don't want you to get lapsed up in the movie because I'm hoping, especially based on what many of you wrote, recognize that the movie's kind of trash <laughs> in comparison to like the poem. Um, nonetheless, the, the trick to really responding to this question is actually talking about the shaper first and what the shaper means. Because he's listening to okay. the shaper I, I when he says that. And I'm going to keep going okay. around this way. Like, I give you guys, like, that baseline, and then I'll keep hopping around. Hey, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, oh, we're, we're, we're over, over here. here. Okay. I love this line. Because I, 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 I relate to it on such a deep I level. I messed up. Kind of. You messed up? What do you mean you messed up? Oh, you don't oh, mess up. You it's just okay. learn. I, 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 the line, like, ridiculous, hairy creature torn apart by poetry. I relate to that, especially when I don't feel like shaving that week or something, you know, like. 
this, this team, right, thank you for a couple people laughing, okay? <laughs> but um, the, the real trick to answering this is thinking about the shaper and what the shaper does and what the shaper means. Because Grendel says this after he's listening to the shaper. So I'll leave you with that. I'm going to keep hopping around. He's upset, He's upset that, that they're, they're like, like him. him. All right, so I, I just popped in and I heard somebody's voice like go up, which is like indicative to me of a question. So what are we talking about? Uh, Charlotte, if you could go back to the slides. Yeah. Oh, I love this. We, we're, trying we're trying to understand, understand why, because we're, we're assuming, assuming that, that um, Tarn Apart by Poetry Means is referring to the, to the song. song. That the shaper was singing. Boom. Which was, which was whole. Yes. Um, but we're trying to understand why is, why is Grendel upset by these lies? Okay. We're trying to understand that. Ooh. All right. So first of all, I want to say great job because you guys are much higher level than the rest of your classmates are. Um, the fact that you're at that point recognizing that it's the shaper that's tearing him apart. So this. To answer your question, which I'm not going to do specifically, but instead drive you to different inquiry points, there's a few different levels there. So on the book level, you have the next slide where there's a little bit of a trick. And I show you that Gardner, if you want to switch over, Gardner was very meticulous. No, no, back to the, the Zodiac thing. Sorry. Gardner was really meticulous to align each chapter to a different zodiac sign. So chapter three, when Grendel says this, is the Gemini, the twins. And one of the characteristic features of Gemini is that it's basically dichotomous. Two, two parts of the same that are constantly battling each other. That's what a dichotomy is. Two opposing parts of the same thing. You know, that push and pull, the devil and, and angel, like that's that's basically a dichotomy. And that's what the, the Gemini, the twins are supposed to represent. So he, now we have to understand Grendel's characterization. Even though his character himself, he like functions like an older teenager, his time and years is different than human time and years. He's like a thousand years old, right? Because I mean, we know descendant of Cain, it's not like they were born yesterday. He He's watched humans. He's watched humans from the background. His first encounter with them that we know of was like like one on one was in chapter two, which didn't end up being such a great encounter, you know, with the bull smashing up against. But he's watched right. what humans have done in the process and in the name of civilization. Right. So let's just take the example of, of his encounter with them from chapter two. What do the humans do? The first thing they think of when they see him dangling in the tree. What do they think? He's a spirit. Before that, they're like, is that a fungus? Then they think like, oh, maybe yeah. it's a tree spirit, right? Like very, you know, human aspect, deductive reasoning, trying to associate something they already know and attribute those characteristics, right? We can't possibly comprehend something that we don't already know. That's a very human thing. We have to automatically categorize things. So we're going to be like Indiana Jones here. We're watching this scenario from the outside, anthropologically. They can't, they don't know what a Grendel is, who Grendel is. Like, so hmm, maybe it's a fungus. Maybe it's a tree spirit. They're, they're trying to categorize. So the next human reaction is to show peace. Okay. Maybe it's a, maybe it wants pig. Maybe it wants food, right? Across all cultures, across all of time, the way humans show hospitality is offering food to things. Even like, you know, those feral cats you sometimes find in the street or whatever. We offer food to things that we want to show that we care. He understands their language. But when he goes to speak, what do they hear? They don't understand him and think that he's angry. They hear, like, in my mind's ear, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> meanwhile, he's right. saying, like, pig. Oh, okay, cool, pig. But they hear that. So now, human reaction number two 
if it doesn't look like me and it doesn't sound like me, then it must be enemy. <sighs> right? Now we got to think about this, not just on the Grendel aspect, but on the cultural aspect too. What's going on around the world, the Vietnam War. How do we treat people that we other them because they don't fit in the categories that we comprehend. We other things. Okay. He's not doing what I expect. So therefore he must be bad. And, and humans just do this naturally. And this is, and this could be root of like racism, different types of prejudice. We other, if they're not me, they're against me. And now this is Grendel's one-on-one -on -one encounter with humans. So he's hearing the Shaper sing these songs about the amazing Hrothgar, their wonderful feats, the fantastic things they do. Meanwhile, he watches them other their own people, throw some of their own people out of their own hall, leave them naked, do horrible things to their own people. He's seen what they do to horses, to other animals, to himself. But the Shaper shapes, right? Crafts such beautiful language in such a way that it's poetry and it's musical and he wants to believe it. So there he was torn apart by perception versus reality. Oh. I know that was a really long answer. So I'm giving you guys a job. I can't possibly do that six times. I will choke. So <laughs> I'm giving you guys the job to bring that to the rest of the class. If that's okay, please. Okay. 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 So Let's I'm going to duck out of here to see where everybody else is, but hopefully that was comprehensive. Does anyone have questions? No. Does that, that feel a little really bit better? Good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't mind me. Like this, like I said, it's my favorite book. It's hard for me not to talk to my favorite people about my favorite book and just like be full of gratitude. So thank you for that. Hey guys. Hi, Mrs. Hey. So first thing, Bella, did I answer your question? I just want to make sure I answer yes. your question. Okay. Yes. Um wait, Mr. Sir, I have a quick question. I did my reflection earlier, so I did I wrote about all the standards again. Oh geez. And then okay. I also added a <laughs> extra stuff to make sure I made the standards as well. All right. <laughs> so like and like I know that I, I have to go back and revise it because there's also making sure that it's mastery with the standards. But yeah, is that all right or should I just cut out everything? No, no. If you already did the work, you already did the work. I'm not going to ask you to, you know, go change that. You know, you just gave me more work. But it's okay. Don't do it for standard. Uh, don't do it for <laughs> checkpoint four. Just don't do that to yourself for checkpoint okay. four. Yeah. The, the goal is to illustrate mastery in all of the standards. You don't have to keep doing that over and over again once you've hit. The point of mastery is like, okay, you got this. You know what I mean? You could keep adding more, <laughs> you could keep adding more <laughs> stuff to your portfolio and you should just because that's your work and you want to demonstrate mm -hmm. it. But you don't have to tell me about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. So Use your knowledge of how to read literature like a professor to provide commentary on why this is significant. I guess, like, I feel like here, like, even though Shaper is blind, he does provide a new perspective to Grendel, does he not? And that's the significance mm -hmm. the key of it. Him. Yeah, like, that's, like, even, so, like, that. I think that's what the last part of how to read, like, how the excerpt says, like, he sees beyond, like, what normal people see like Grendel sees I think he mentions this too he sees what he only observes and what like that's all he relies on mm -hmm. but like Shaper is like the opposite he's giving him a new perspective and even though like, and like Shaper can't even observe it himself technically because he's blind yeah like Shaper... wait you can you go first no you can go Wait, no. Wait, no, please. Uh, I was just gonna I was just gonna say how like I, I was just gonna like add on to Elsie and just say like how like they it said it literally says inside of the work blind like introducing a blind character into the work is something like important and like must be at stake. So like basically it like shows the importance of his character. 
So I'm going to give you guys a bit of a clue. As I told you (laughs) once, and I'll tell you a million times, there's no such thing as like a really original, original work, right? Memory symbol pattern. (laughs) Who have you met before that's blind? Oedipus Rex. (laughs) In in Oedipus Rex, who was blind? Oracle. Oh, no, no. Tiresias, the the, the blind prophet. Bingo. And what's the rock that the Greeks love to die on? Their irony. Oh my god. The irony. Yeah, I was about to comment on that afterwards, but like the blind Sorry. person show it knows more than Grendo, who is like and like it's just irony, I guess. Wow, gee. Mm, does the blind guy uh, know more than Grendel? Does he? Because well, Grendel he is a lot older a and person. sees has seen a lot more, literally. I mean, mm-hmm. we were discussing he earlier, does, but he has a very... like, the art thing, like, the art, like, uh, Nicole brought it up with the Gemini point of view, and it was, like, um, like, his art, his appreciate, like, Grendel's appreciation of art and his, like, logical side are, like, coming into, like, split and stuff, so, like, mm-hmm. I thought that the Shaper would, like, represent, like, art or something, and then yes. that would give Grendel more insight onto, like, what humanity like a would sculptor, be. sculptor, Shaper. Exactly! Mm-hmm. Like, what life is. He's a very... <laughs> exactly. That's why I say, like, why does Gardner name him Shaper instead of like Scop or Bard or whatever? Because the one who sings the history, who writes the history, is the one who creates the history. And even though mm-hmm. Grendel has the ability to see, it's perception versus reality. Because whatever has been written is what's left behind. That becomes the truth. Instead of what actually yeah, happens. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So there's Grendel. And I relate to this on such a deep, visceral level. Ridiculous, hairy creature torn apart by poetry. So he's calling, <laughs> especially when I don't feel like shaving that week, right? So like, <laughs> he's, he's, calls, <laughs> like he, he's using these words that they're using about himself. Like a ridiculous, hairy creature. But there he was, nonetheless. Like he, he, he others himself. He itemizes himself. And yet emotionally he's torn apart by poetry he's listening to these beautiful this beautiful song by the shaper talking about the great feats of hrothgar and this beautiful hall of Hera. meanwhile grendel has witnessed with his eyes mind you which is adding the other layer of irony how they are terrible to their horses they're terrible to their own people they're terrible to the environment the vikings were known to have like destroyed the the lands to the deforestation to the point that that's still not healed thousand years later like that's Mm -hmm. just that's just a standard fact he's watched the humans destroy all these things but all we hear about these beautiful feats of these amazing heroes who've done phenomenal things like like who guys Mm -hmm. like who's that yeah like and like Like also has a point of view like like what like beowulf guys who's the song who's the song that's been told for a thousand years it's beowulf song so that's another oh, layer mm-hmm. of irony from Gardner. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's my favorite sound when a kid was like, "Oh, <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> sound in the world." <laughs> oh my god! It's hard to call you guys. So yeah, kids. I never You're kids to me, you know. <laughs> Technically, we still are kids. Well, half of us are. Well, I hope I hope you know. I don't mean that it's as a diminutive mean thing. Nicole. I mean it affectionately. No, me and Liz here. Okay. No, I just don't want to insult anybody. All right, so I'm going to leave you guys with that. There's a lot of conversation there. I'm going to keep hopping around to the different rooms. Do so you want to do it on the 15th? Sure. There's 10:30 to. Hey what guys. Is it, 45. Hey. Uh, we're just thinking of what day to schedule an appointment. Oh, yeah. actually, you know what? I'm so glad you did this because I forgot to mention the parent-teacher conferences in our <laughs> announcement. So I'm, as I'm looking at this, ooh, I forgot that. So thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll get notified whenever you guys pick it anyway, so. Okay. Thank you. No, no, thank you guys. I'm glad you're making, taking advantage of it while we still can, you know, because I don't know what the heck is going to go on with the new schedule. And so 
um, just be mindful. I don't know what's going to, I'm not positive about Thursday and Friday, the 18th and 19th, because I don't know, like you guys, I don't know if they're going back. If we have class, we don't have class. So ideally Monday through Wednesdays for sure, Thursday, Friday, big question mark. I'm going to go keep hopping around unless you guys have questions for me now. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll see you guys. Or can we not do them yet? Hey. No, I, I took those dates away because I don't know what the heck is going to go on with the uh, new schedule going back into school. Oh. Do you know what day it is? Like the day the day it starts? So it's supposed to be like you guys go back in on the in the building on the 22nd. I don't know what's going to happen because they still have like vaccine appointments and what have you in our building. I don't know that <laughs> this was not planned well. Like, well, shocking. Like the whole year has been planned great. Right. So, no, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. But is there anything I can answer now? No, I think we're good right now. You're okay, yeah. right now. We're we're yeah. Okay. All right. Pull me in if anything. Hey guys. Hi. We Hello. finished through the slides. Any questions or or wonderings or things that were inspiring? Wait, so we're, well, we're allowed to um like record new videos for their portfolio if we want, right? Of course. Yeah, you could record if you want to talk about like Bad Boy Entertainment and how Puff Daddy changed hip hop industry. That's fine by me. You know, I, I don't mind at all. The point is addressing standard five. Sorry, I just did a, a Peloton class this morning. It was with Bad Boy Entertainment. So that's at the forefront. Of my mind. I'm like, that's showing my age. I'm like, yeah. All right. <laughs> Any questions or stuff that I can answer now, like either about the lessons or projects or. Everything was clear. The astrology part, existentialism, the shaper. Oh, we no, were we kind of confused why that was included. <laughs> we just kind of went around and shared our zodiac signs. That's good. No, you should relate it because then that's actually an important aspect of it because the way Gardner set it up. All right. Everything he does is on a macro scale and a micro scale. So the I'll tell you this. The first time I read Grendel, I didn't catch that. It was the second time around that I was like, wait a minute, there's got to be something to do with each of these animals in this, these chapters. Um, he gives us a clue because Grendel says in the first chapter, and so begins the 12th year of my idiotic war. 12 years. The structure of all time is set on 12, right? 24 hours in a day, 12 months in a year, 60 minutes in an hour. Everything is a derivative slash multiple of 12. All of time is set on 12s. So he splits up the 12 years of the war into 12 chapters. Each chapter, we see the development of Grendel himself going through a human year, essentially, is all 12 zodiac signs, and going through all human emotion. Because theoretically, each zodiac sign is supposed to be demonstrative of a certain characteristic, right? If you're born in this month, these are supposedly your dominant character traits. You know, it's fun, right? We have fun with it. You're like, what's my, you know, my sign, blah, blah, blah. But for this othered monster, this othered creature, this ridiculous hairy creature, separate, tree spirit, fungus, all these things that he, they think he might be, He's going through in each chapter very human emotions and very human development over the course of his growth with humanity, which ultimately we know is going to lead to his his own death. And the process of, of 
So he's on the global scale, it's set up for all time and demonstrative of all time. But on the Grendel scale, we're watching him as we know the different characteristics for each separate zodiac, we can look for it in that chapter. What's going to be Gar uh, Grendel's growth here? We see it in chapter one with the persistence of this ram. We see it in chapter two with the bull slamming him up into the tree. Three, ridiculous hairy creature torn apart like the Gemini. So we get gives us a little bit of clue for each single chapter. It's, it's really meticulously done when you realize how much thought actually goes into it. This is kind of like silly, but so Not silly. kind of like looking, is it like all in order, like throughout the year, like Aries story? Um, like it goes, follows like that. Cause so far it has. Yes, it is in order, but he starts with Aries. So yeah. it's in order from Aries where most people you would argue you could say either start with Capricorn or Aquarius. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it does follow in order. Mm -hmm. But going around and talking about what each of your zodiac signs were is helpful because that's derivative of, like, we don't necessarily know what the characteristics are for each zodiac. We usually know our own. So. Does that answer? Now I'm going to task you guys with a job because I didn't have the opportunity to have that conversation with every team. If that could be something, one of the things that you bring into the whole group discussion so that everybody gets to benefit from that, that would be helpful for me. Um, I'm back. <laughs> You're all insane. <laughs> <laughs> I love Brendel. I love Brendel here. This before he becomes a jerk. Um, um spoiler alert. I think part, okay, my internet connection is unstable, so I apologize. That's all right, so out. my internet, my but, mind, it's all unstable, so it's okay. Um, I think one of the things <laughs> Thank here, you. it's like, <laughs> we read, because we read Beowulf, that like gives the opposite perspective of the men, and I think that that's, was important to it's like Grendel like shouts at them you're all insane or whatever but like to them he's the crazy monster or whatever so I think like the exploring portrayed the insanity of I don't know like I'm kind of like in the middle like I'm almost there to the point but I'm not quite there yet because I see that like there's the two sides to the story obviously and I don't know so what you're saying is insanity is perception and what we see especially yeah. in as he moves from chapter two to three perception versus reality kind of becomes a prevalent both conflict and theme you have so in chapter two right this is their grendel's like first very close encounter with humans he's he's been watching humans for like a thousand years just but watching them from afar watching their destruction, their deforestation, their abuse to animals, but just watching. This is his actual one-on-one -on -one encounter. And in this one-on-one -on -one encounter, we see hit them do something that's very human first, right? It is such a human reaction to try and categorize everything we don't understand. We It must fit into something we already know. We don't have the ability, if it almost feels like, to comprehend the fact that there's something we can't comprehend. It, it's human arrogance, okay? Just like if we think about Book of Job, that's a callback there, where God's like, Psh, um, I'm in charge of the whole universe. There's things you don't understand. You're going to have to deal with that, bro. You know, it's the same thing here. They see him hanging in the tree, and they're like, is this a fungus? Uh, maybe it's a tree spirit. There they are trying to categorize things, right? Then they're like, okay, well, if it's this tree spirit, let me do my next very human reaction, and let me try to feed it. Right? That's our human hospitable thing, whether it's actual guests coming into your home or like a feral cat outside. Let me give it food. That's how I know how to show peace. Grendel's trying to be like, yeah, all right, cool, pig, great. He understands them. But linguistically, what do they hear when he goes to speak back? 
like this monster kind of yeah in my like, mind's ear I like yeah i hear rah, 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 like that's what, like in my when i'm reading yeah. this that's what i imagine that they're hearing so now human response again if it doesn't look like me and it doesn't sound like me it must be the enemy and they automatically other so you have to take this in the individual context for what that means for Grendel, but then also remember what's going on in the world, Vietnam War, the othering of people. And that is such a human, if it's not like me, not like my culture, then it's an enemy. And it, it plays both parts. And that's where Gemini also falls in. The big global aspect of and the individual aspect. Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, because uh, the breakout yeah. rooms are, are closing, so I'm going to close them now, but hopefully that helps a little bit. As far as insanity, it's perception versus reality. That's all insanity ever could be. Welcome back, everybody. So I had, oh, I didn't realize I was muted. Whoops, sorry. Welcome back, everybody. I had such a great conversation in all the different groups. I'm so excited to, um, for all of us to bring these conversations together. So if you could please have your passage master put in your questions slash questions or whatever you guys want to discuss into the chat. That would be phenomenal. Um, and then uh, and then we'll get started. Please bringing in your insight, your questions, all of it. And I know there's still a couple, but whoever would like to start us off, because there's just so much to these chapters and so rich. And I, I mean, I'm just like, I'm in love with this book. So there's always so much to talk about. Whoever would like to start us off. Thank you, Tiffany. Uh, so I want to talk about our group's question, which is uh, how does how and why is Grendel torn apart by poetry? I identify the split to which Grendel refers. So our group, we were really confused because we were like, oh, we thought Grendel hates the humans because he's done all those bad things. He's experienced human nature firsthand, right? Because they treated him very poorly at the when he first met in chapter two. And then in chapter three, he's seen that humans have like killed, they are killing each other. They are like killing animals as well, which is why we were really confused about why uh, Grendel would be torn apart. So then we realized that the Shaper, the reason why he's called the Shaper is kind of like because he shaped history in a way, to shape it into a way where history sounds really, really good. And because what he hears from the Shaper about talking about the history, like the, the victories of the wars and stuff, he is very conflicted by it because he makes it sound so good to the point where he wants to believe the Shaper's words. And yet, the, in reality, humans aren't really that good. Like humans, he's seen that, which is why it kind of relates to the split and the chapter itself, which is why it relates to the Zodiac about being Geminis because Geminis are always split between two things. And so Grendel's in this situation where he's, he's kind of, uh, split between perception and reality, which, um, so he's like, I want to believe the words of the Shaper. But the thing is, I've seen all these things that he has done, and it's terrible, which is why he's kind of split. Oh, it's so awesome. You brought in so many great points. That's a plus 30. Thank you. 
uh, sky. Um, okay, so I, I fully agree with everything that has been said, but I wanted to talk about like my group's question, and I also believe that it was Team Six that talked about um, like the shaper being blind because that's what we focus on a lot in our breakout room. Um, the first thing that we noticed was not only is there like a stereotype of a wise old like blind man in a lot of different um, like books and stories and films, it's just a common stereotype. That was that was something that we picked up on. But also Gardner used that to his advantage in, for lack of better words, shaping the shaper. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So he kind of, he... He was able to use that stereotype to not only portray um, the shaper as a, like a wise man that that all of these people are listening to because he's so he he is so wise because of his like lack of sense in in another in one way that heightens his sense in another. Um, we also began to talk about the contrast between the shaper as a character and Grendel as a character, and maybe his, like I I brought up maybe his lack, his lack of physical sight makes him more optimistic because I think it was Kat that mentioned in our group um he has a sort of like more spiritual vision um and in in that sense he may he may be more, more of an optimistic optimistic person like when he came into the hall he was just smiling like people described him as having like like a stupid like smile on his face and he was just telling of the beauty of like humanity so that's one end of the spectrum, whereas Grendel is on the complete opposite end. He mm. has his physical sight, but he doesn't have like that that heightened sense of like spirituality and optimism that the shaper has. So Gardner is able to use the fact that that the shaper doesn't have physical sense, has a physical sense of sight to his advantage because it makes him seem like such a wise and optimistic person that Grendel seems kind of like the outcast for not listening to him mm -hmm. because everyone else just is able to see how how wise and how optimistic he is and how truly beautiful humanity is whereas grendel is kind of like taking it for as it is like this old man can't see what's really going on mm -hmm. grendel's a much more physical person oh sky plus 30 beautiful and we cannot guys uh the insight in this conversation we cannot forget i mentioned in a couple of teams that i was hopping around the the memory symbol pattern right which comes up in how to read literature like a professor that we've already met these types of characters before nothing is really truly completely original we have oedipus rex right and tiresias our blind prophet and we cannot forget from from the greeks i, I said i've forgotten which team but Irony. Irony is the rock that the Greeks loved to die on, right? The the idea of Tiresias being a blind prophet, where you don't have the physical sight, you have the insight. And there is the shaper without the physical sight, but he's the one with the ability to speak and sing songs of poetry, and therefore he ends up making the history, crafting the history that's left behind. And that his truth, whatever he speaks and sings, becomes the reality. That becomes actual history, as opposed to what's being seen right in front of us. Just like if we think about fake news right now, whatever is being reported is what becomes the history, as opposed to what we actually witness in our own backyards. Am I making sense, guys? Matthew. Oh, sorry, I stole it from you, Skylar. Sorry, <laughs> but I already gave it to Matthew. So, oh uh, yeah, um, I want to continue talking about the blind guy because there's something really <laughs> interesting that um, in the how to read literature like a professor that they said where blindness it doesn't only represent like well because you were talking about how like it it, it represents like uh, like being good at something else right like he doesn't have the sight but he does have the insight like different other characteristics of him are better. Mm -hmm. and uh him being blind calls attention to that but it also uh in that like passage it also discussed how like being blind can also be representative of like a different deficiency on another level and um like you said about how in different characters we also see that in um oedipus where he blinds himself because he he was blind to like the truth and whatnot like earlier in the story and um the shaper in this like his blindness is also representative of how he's like blind of 
at least in my interpretation about how he's like blind to the actual realities of how like kind of nasty the Danes are when he's telling like this tale of how like glorious and awesome they are. Plus 20. Awesome. Oh, and no one has a hand raised. The beauty of a ghost. A lot of pressure. <laughs> so let's go with uh, Rico Lou. Right. Thanks, Matt. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the questions. I'm definitely not giving up this chance that's um, right that's right that's the attitude uh i would like to answer uh matt's team two's question um how and why are um, humans the most dangerous things um and that's uh we talked about it, and that's because humans have the ability to think for themselves make decisions um contemplate their actions and go through with their actions um whereas grendel i think it's the difference is that Grendel is a because he's a monster. He thinks very singularly. Um, he has instincts, and he has um, he just goes through what his actions. But humans, on the other hand, they're willing to kill their own, um, and they definitely thought about it before doing it. And that shows that um, humans are vicious, merciless, and the most dangerous thing on the world. Plus twenty. See, you pulled that out. Any, no hands? Yeah, Lacey. Um, I wanted to go back to Tiffany's point about the Gemini. And I think that because I wanted to compare that since Grendel is the last person who speaks his form of the language, and he's also the last person who knows the true history of humans because he's seen it for himself and he's not listening fully to the shaper, I think he's split because he, he wants to, he still wants to know the truth, but he wants to fit in with the crowd. And eventually the Shaper, if he starts killing people, the Shaper is going to sing about how Grendel's this monster. And if Grendel can be that monster for the humans and sort of fit into their story, I think that's, what, that's what's going to happen because Grendel no longer wants to be the odd person out. Awesome. Plus 20. Now, speaking on the idea of Zodiac, I spoke, I can't, I apologize not remembering team to team who I say what to, but I did speak to one of the teams in depth about the 12 months and the Zodiac and the time structure. So if someone from that team would be willing to bring that to the whole group, I would be most appreciative. And Lacey, it's yours to pass still. Uh, Stacy. Um, something that I just noticed was interesting, like, especially about, like, the inclusion of the Shaper and how he's, like, representing art and stuff. Um, if we're looking at Grendel, like, as a, as, like, a venting piece for Gardner to, like, put all his, like, angst and stuff in his, like, <laughs> use. <laughs> and if the Shaper represents, like, art and that kind of insight, well, we know Gardner wrote this book, right? And, like, writing is a, writing is basically art, but in, like, word form. So it could suggest how, like, um, the Shaper... Or like not the shaper, but like the, what the shaper represents and like art and like poetry and those kind of things. It kind of opened Gardner's eyes to like what humanity could be, and it helped him. It may, it might have like given him an escape from like the darkness of everything that he experienced and like all the like emotions that he would feel. Plus yeah. uh, twenty, Stacy. But before you pass it, I'm gonna give you a follow up question there. Um, if we're looking at the shaper as an artist, and we should because poetry is art who i i've said this to a couple of the teams everything that gardner does is on a micro scale and a macro scale who is the shaper on the macro scale here there's the shaper the character that's the micro scale but who's the shaper on the macro scale like on the big picture mm -hmm. like who shapes the like the story mm -hmm. would that be like Grendel himself, like his own like conflict. Gardner. Gardner's mm. Gardner's mocking himself mm. as a, as an artist. Oh, so it's like a form of self harm, but for art, <laughs> kind of. You could look at it that way, yeah. In 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 following your analysis line. Mm -hmm. 
Well done. Bonus 10. <laughs> uh, Kevin. Yeah, so we kind of talked a little bit about the um, the zodiac signs, and you can kind of see how, um, you know, in, in all of the three chapters that we've read so far, there's this um, constant uh, zodiac kind of symbolism. So in the first chapter, we see the ram, that's like Aries in the zodiac sign. And then we see the, the bull in the second chapter that um, kind of tries to gore him from the tree. That would be the, um, the Taurus, I think. And then in the third chapter, when we split, in, when when he um, gets split into two by the uh, the shaper, that's the the Gemini. And while I'm not personally um, sure exactly what kind of characteristics traditionally go with each zodiac sign, I think it would be interesting to kind of consider um, Grendel's development as a character and his emotions to think about um, what how those characteristics. Um, might have been informed by the, the zodiac sign that's represented in that particular chapter. Thank you so much, plus 10. So what we should actually look at there is, and I had mentioned into the team, like I said, everything Gardner does with this novel is on a micro scale and a macro scale, and we have to come to it, all of it, with double perspective. So on the micro scale, each chapter aligns with the zodiac sign. On the macro scale it's because all time is structured on basis of 12. You have 24 hours in a day, 12 months in a year, 60 minutes in in an hour, etc, etc. Everything is on a multiple basis of 12. And as Grendel says in the first chapter, so begins the 12th year of my idiotic war. So we see his on a micro scale, the individual development each year as he changes during this quote unquote war with humanity. And he, something that they've othered him. And I've said this in a, a couple of different teams. They othered him because he doesn't look like them. He doesn't sound like them. So he becomes the other, the enemy. And so in the process of othering, we also see him very humanly. Each chapter goes through a zodiac sign. What is the zodiac sign if not characteristic of essentially all humans, right? Theoretically, each one of us is born under some zodiac, which so it's supposed to be are human characteristics and each year is supposed to be aligned with his characterization all human characteristics but they've done nothing but other him so it's perception versus reality and that's where you also get the split of gemini you get to split him torn apart by poetry the perception of what the shaper says versus the reality of what he knows and how it's so much better and more beautiful to go with what somebody tells us instead of and and redefining what truth means so we see both aspects and on a more global scale the othering during like the vietnam war and the othering that humans generally do if it doesn't look like me it doesn't sound like me then it can't possibly be anything that i want to be around and we do that with other people never mind a grendel whatever he is. So everything you see, everything you go through with this novel, I want you to think about it in the global macro scale and then the micro scale, how it's affecting Grendel himself. Does that make sense? Thank you, Raquel. So with that, guys, moving forward, looking looking ahead to the next, next chapter that you guys are going to be reading for this cycle is a uh, chapter four, and this is where you're going to be looking at, it, it all ties together because art as commercialism and what that means. So if you're coming into the chapter with that in your mind, art as commercialism. Um, also looking ahead, I'm going to ask you guys to record a video next time around for the next cycle. So if that's something you want to pre-talk about with your teams, it's not going to be a long video, something like recording your own discussion around the idea of art as commercialism, um, as opposed to me popping into each and recording the whole lesson again. I also wanted to point out the recording for this lesson. The reason behind that was because we're supposed to have even more guests. We had one today. We were supposed to have more guests, but now with the new schedule and high schools going back and everything, I don't know if they're going to be able to come in 
So they asked if I would be able to record what's going on so I could share the video. So that's where that came from. And I want to thank you guys, as always, for being the best. What a great conversation. I said this to one team, but I mean it for everybody. Getting the opportunity to talk about my favorite book with my favorite people injects such gratitude in my day. So I want to thank you. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all on Monday. Bye, guys. Have a great day. Bye.